Hello and welcome to HK study. So in this tutorial we are learning the basics of Linux. Okay, now that we had a quick overview of Kali Linux, I want to spend some time for talking about the basics of Linux terminal. So you can access the terminal through this application right here. So if you click on that, it will open the terminal window for us. And as you can see, all it is a black screen where you can type commands. Now the Linux terminal is actually very very powerful because it can be used to do anything that you can think of really. A lot of the application in Linux that have a graphical interface where command prompts program first and then people made a graphical interface for it. So a lot of time maybe the graphical interface will be buggy or crashy but the terminal program still work. Also a lot of hacking tool do not even have a graphical interface. A lot of them can only be used throughout the terminal. In many scenarios you might only have an SSH connection or a command prompt to access a machine. So you need to know how to use this command prompt in order to achieve your goals. So throughout the lecture we are going to be using the terminal a lot. And that's why I want to spend some time just showing you the basics of the terminal and making sure that you are going to be comfortable using it. Now the basic idea is you type a command and the result will be displayed for you on the screen. So let have a look on very very simple command which is pwd means present working directory. Now this command prints the current working directory has the name root. So if I hit enter you can see it prints forward slash root which means right now I am in the root directory. So basically root is the main directory. So if I do ls which is a command to list all the directory and files in the current working directory. We should get all these directory that we have seen here. So if I had to enter as you can see I can see all these directory in the current working directory. Now another very useful command is cd command. This command allows us to navigate into another directory. So for example let's say I want to navigate into downloads. All we have to do is to type cd followed by the name of the directory that I want to navigate to. So I am going to type downloads. Now if I hit enter, I should be inside the downloads now. So if I do pwd to see my current working directory, you will see that it's saying I am in the root forward slash downloads. So if I do ls here, it should show me all the directories and files inside downloads. So if I do enter. As you can see I have a directory and the file in here and these are the exact same files that you will see if you double click the downloads here. Now if you want to go back one directory so similar to press the back button here all you have to do is to type cd again the command to change the working directory followed by dot dot and now if we, I do you will see I am back in root and if I do ls you will see all the directories and files and root. So that's all good and there is actually a huge number of commands that you can use. We are actually going to be using a lot of them throughout the lecture. So you are going to naturally learn them as you go through the course. Now if you are using a command and you are not sure about how this command work you can just use the man command to display the manual of this command. For example, we have used the ls command here to list the files and directory in the current working directory. But if I do man followed by ls, this basically means I am requesting the manual of ls. So I am asking how can I use the ls command. So if I hit enter you will see I will get a screen similar to text file and basically it's given me a lot of information on how to use the ls command. So you can see it's telling us that this command will list the directory content. You can see the way it works by type in ls followed by the option followed by the file. If you want to run it on file, you can see a longer description of the command and then you can see all the options and the arguments that you can use with the command now in Linux. Most of the time the option will always follow the same syntax. So either use dash letter or dash dash a word to specify the argument. For example here the dash and dash dash 
all will ignore in trees starting with dot. So if you keep going down in here, you will see all the option and argument you can use with the ls command. And we have another example. Here we have the L which means it's going to use a long listing format which will display more information about the files in the current working directory. So let's have a look on that. I am going to press Q to exit this and then we are going to do ls as usual. And since we read the manual, we know we can do dash L to see more information about the files. And if I hit enter, now you can see I am still getting the same directory but it's also show me the permissions of the user that they have created and so on. So you can use the man command on any command you want. Not only the alias, so you can use it on the pwd, you can use it on the cd or any other command and it will show you full description or the manual page of how to use this command. Now I am going to clear the screen by typing clear and the next thing that I want to show you is the dash dash help. So this is something that you can use again and almost all commands and all programs in the Linux. So you, you can just type the program name or the command name followed by dash dash help as you might think this will show you help message telling you that this command is a what and this program is. The argument that it takes how to use the pro argument are not example at the bottom. Now another useful thing with the term and also I am going to clear this again is the arrow. So you can press up to go up to see all the commands that we have executed before and again you can go down to see the navigate between the commands that you executed previously. You can also use the tab for auto complete. So again let's do ls and you can see all the files and let's say we want to go into documents so you can do cd followed by documents you can type documents or if you are lazy like me you can just do doc and press tab and you can see it's automatically completing the rest of the work for me so this is something that comes very very handy when you are using the terminal for a long time now what i also want to show you is how to install program and call from the terminal so first i am going to clear this and the first thing that you want to do is update the resources where Kali can search and download programs from. So you are going to do apt-get update. Now apt-get apt-get is the name of the application that allows us to download and install programs. And we are saying update because I am saying that I want to update the list of all the programs that I can install so I am going to hit enter. And you want to make sure that you have internet connection when running this. And as you can see it's telling me that it's done and now we can go ahead and start and stolen an application. So the first program that I want to install is actually a terminal program. So similar to this one but it allows us to have multiple terminal windows open at the same time. So in order to install a program through the command line we are going to do apt-get which is again the name of the program that allows us to install programs on the system. We are going to say that I want to install and the program that I want to install is called terminator. So very very simple. First of all we are type in the name of the command which is apt-get. We are saying that I want to install the program name that I want to install is called terminator. So I am going to hit enter and this is going to download and install terminator for me. So you can use the same command to install any program that you want. You just need to replace terminator with the name of the program that you want to install now. I have already downloaded and installed this before so it didn't ask me to confirm. But if you are running this of course you are the first time it might ask you to confirm whether or not you actually want to install this program. So all you have to do is press Y from the keyboard and hit enter. Now as you can see it's done. So if I go to my all applications in here and just type terminator you can see that I have it here. So I am actually going to drag it and put it in my dark so I can access it easily in the nature future. So now I can just click in the here.